great land of Punjab, the heartland of Punjab, and uh, 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 we have uh, uh, Special Secretary Revenue, uh, Mr. Keshav here. So the advantage of being an IS officer is that you are working with various departments at the district level, at the collectorate level, and various other agencies of the government, and you are interacting with multiple stakeholders. So I am going to ask you a very open-ended question, and you have uh, like also been a uh, secretary cooperative, uh, like a secretary or officer in the cooperative uh, department. So how has uh, your experience of like dealing with the cooperative uh, cooperative banking system been you are uh, right now in the revenue department uh, 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 like you would be dealing with the banking system the bfsi institutions so your experience uh, from a perspective of the government uh, office official so first i'll uh, thank elet for such a wonderful summit uh, let me start with uh, a uh, little introduction of myself. Basically, I am an IIT Bombay graduate. I studied mechanical engineering there. Later, I joined IS. I, of course, I have worked in various capacities as SDM, Additional Deputy Commissioner, Corporation Commissioner in Patiala. And then I have mostly worked with Home Department, which looks after criminal justice system, and Revenue Department, which is looking after land revenue management. So, here, I'd like to speak about a very wonderful initiative which our Honorable PM has taken, which is called Swamitva Scheme. It's also related with banking sector, so we'll come to it. Basically, our land records, how it started was that uh, when the Britishers were here, they were interested only in collecting the land revenue. So, when they started making record of rights of the land, they put a it's called Lal Dora in Punjab. They put a, you know, basically a line where the Abadi is residing, where people are residing. So where, from where no land revenue is supposed to come. So they would not make any record for that. And for the rest of the revenue state, they would make a record who is tilling the land, how much is the land, what kind of crop is growing, and what revenue is supposed to pay, land revenue. So till now, now Britishers have gone, there is no land revenue as such, which is being called Lagan, which was popularly known as Lagan. But till now, surprisingly, there was no land record as such for the rural Abadi areas. So, uh, our Honorable PM came up with this fantastic initiative, which is called Swamitva. So, what they are doing is that they are creating land records for these rural areas from scratch. And they are using, you know, top-notch technology. Survey of India is basically doing a drone-based survey for the village where they come, they map the whole village and then they assign the ownership to the people like this land belongs to this person. They create a record of rights for that land. And now earlier the person had the asset. Say for instance, if somebody has a land 500 square meters in a village, it has some value, but he has no papers for that land. So he can't take any credit. He can't monetize it. So now that is becoming possible. The land is becoming bankable. Earlier, if somebody is having a land asset in a village, he would have to go to non-institutional people for credit because he doesn't have the paper for that. Now with Swamitva, this has been a big enabler in the sense that now people can exchange the land with a proper system, you know, registration system, they will get an ownership deed. And then if they want to sell, they can sell it through registration. Government also ends up getting stamp duty for that. If they want to take credit from the bank, then bank can keep that land as a mortgage. So I think, uh, uh, as Ravi said, working with the government, Swamitva has been a, a big, big, you know, uh, learning for me personally also. And... Uh, it's been a boon for people as such in rural areas. Otherwise, you know, uh, working in the corporation department, I, I handled uh, sort of two banks there. Not directly, there was an MD. I was special secretary corporation. There was an agriculture development bank and there was a state corporation bank. So, uh, I mean, the story there is different, of course, because, uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of uh, loan has been forwarded to rural folks by these banks and these loans are all backed by you know some land 
which has been mortgaged but uh, the repayments have not been uh, as per expectation because a lot of political angles come in then so otherwise you know uh, since all of these guys are from banking sector my topic as such here was um, it was basically uh, financial inclusion so i can speak on that for some time maybe so see financial inclusion government has already done a lot of work so i think uh, government has opened 40 crore accounts for uh, under this jandhan scheme so under jandhan scheme these many accounts have been opened i was personally sdm when it started uh, in 2014 i was sdm in pagwada so i think it started with a lot of fanfare a lot of you know uh, popularity was given to it and then now these accounts have been opened but see with social uh, this uh, financial inclusion how we understand it till now is that okay there is a bank account with a person he has some ability to make payments but this is half of the story i think we should make it like he has some insurance some access to credit and some opportunity to invest so these four things may be payments credit insurance and investment opportunity now maybe 25 30% part of the story is there in place now with this aadhar enabled payment system coming in place i think the rest of story will get uh, uh, you know a good uh, closure because uh, right now what are the challenges to financial inclusion are these challenges like you know uh, brick and mortar structure of the banks the access basically is a challenge so all the people in rural areas difficult areas the demand side challenge is that they are not having access to this brick and mortar banks the supply side challenge is of course uh, it becomes uneconomical for the banks to open branch uh, in areas where there is not much business so i think in my personal opinion the solution lies in the cashless economy where we are going now so with these jandhan accounts aadhar enabled you know payments and mobile numbers attached with the bank accounts the story is going to be towards more towards you know digital payments and uh, cashless economy so uh, now what what is required is that vulnerable groups in rural areas they need a lot of literacy basically you know financial literacy to enable them to uh, adopt this system so uh, for instance a lot of digital payments are available now but they are not in regional languages and also maybe if they are supported by this voice overs where you know the person is told that okay you received this much amount you have paid this much amount in regional languages then the adoption becomes easier at the same time you know uh, protection of consumer rights that is also equally important so this triad of uh, financial inclusion policies moving towards cashless economy digital payments along with financial literacy plus enforcement this triad can move towards you know it can uh, move towards a better uh, economic prosperity and financial inclusion for the vulnerable groups rural areas so i think that's uh, good enough from my side thank you for this opportunity